can do all things, cause it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible to you, blind eyes are open, strongholds are broken.
It's through you I can do anything. Yes, Lord. I can do all things. Because it's you who gives me strength. And nothing is impossible through you. Blind eyes are open. My strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible through you. I can do all things, Lord. I can do all things. Because it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible through you. Blind eyes are open. My strong bones are broken. I'm living. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible.
to work it. Never stop, you never stop working. And that is the truth, he's working right now. Even when I don't see it, to work it. Even when I don't feel it, to work it. Never stop, never stop working. So good. Oh, we 
worship you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we worship you.
you speak his name because his name there is nothing more powerful than his name there's nothing more powerful than his name it might not happen the first time you say it but you just keep saying his name until faith engages in your spirit and you start to declare his name and when you declare his name you declare everything that's attached to his name and the word tells us that everything that the father has which in case you didn't know is everything everything that the father has he gave to his son by the name of Jesus and Jesus said that he has freely given us all things that he has through the blood so when you speak the name of Jesus you're speaking more than just a word and you're speaking more than just a name but you're speaking unlimited power answers healings breakthroughs because that's what's in his name that's what's in his name well let's give the Lord some praise this morning well if Josh and Tanya if you would come and let's welcome them as they come Good to be back home, my second home. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, I think it's me. I'm going to speak first. Sabonete says uh, the Bible school it w- went really well, like in different ways. God moved, and like everybody, this, we didn't have a lot of people this year because of the COVID, and some of people they don't have uh, the money. To, to go to the Bible school, but thanks God, everybody <laughs> was there, and God's still working. So those, those couple, uh, she is actually my cousin, and I'm so happy to see them, that they decide to go to learn more about God, to learn about God's words. And she was telling me, her husband was not interested in learning the word of God, and she said, I was praying for a long time so so my husband can say, okay, I want to learn the word of God. And this year, like, right after New Year Eve, he said, I'm ready to go with you to the Bible school. So he decided to go this year, and I was so, like, happy. And, and some students, and, they, and some students, they give their life to Jesus again because most of the time they know Jesus here but over here they're still needed and like guys your prayers work really it's powerful the the prayer you know because God can move and God can use the way he wants to use you (laughs) me (laughs) and it was good time. It was different for me because it was two years. I haven't seen my parents, my family, but God is good. Amen. And he is still the God from yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. You know? Okay. Uh, I don't know what happens, but... <laughs> I, I could just, yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to speak in Portuguese, okay? Because my mind is not. Okay. First of all, we're going <laughs> to. Keep going in English. Do it in English. Do it in English. Okay. Uh, primeiramente, vamos compartilhar sobre a construção da igreja. And we're going to share about the church construction. Obedir. Oh. <laughs> English, English, English. 
Yeah. Over there we don't have a Rona, you know? Yeah. You just go buy it yourself and you have to do it. Over there is take day, hours, you know? I remember when we, we, when we got there, my dad told Joshua and my other uh, friends over there, everybody there, he said, okay, today, tomorrow we're going to uh, We're going to cut down small trees for scaffolding. But this is like 300 trees. Yeah, when you see it from far away, it looks like it's really light. But this would take a couple days to actually accomplish taking these trees and bringing it to the church site. Everything's very heavy because it's all done by hand. And there's no road there where you can actually transport something. It's uh, needing a, a, quite a bit more work, um, and it's, it's going and prog progressing uh, is moving forward. In, in the missionaries that we support on a monthly basis, we were visiting with them and spending time with them. Have a great time encouraging them. And to see where God is moving uh, in their lives. In the first missionary, Clauber. Clubber's health isn't 100% since he's had a really strong case of COVID. And Clubber's in a time of transition and he's moving to a different city so he can have better health care. But this is requiring a, a lot of energy for him. He's actually moving at the beginning of this month, so currently, and he was asking for prayers for this whole transition for him. And uh, Tanya's dad, Ignacio, Pastor Ignacio. To be a pastor in a Tikuna tribe is, is not an easy task. It's very difficult. With new believers, as in the Tikuna tribe, it's very hard to start with new believers. There's a lot of uh, criticism and slander that ends up happening, especially when you're in a leadership position in that part of the world. It's very difficult. Last year, he wanted to give up that leadership position and being pastor uh, in the community there, but uh, he didn't give up. He kept on uh, persevering through all the difficulties there. Yep, she wants you to keep praying uh, for this difficult work that is on his hands there and that the, the Tikuna tribe would know Jesus Christ even more. Alrighty. Yeah, I just want to reinforce what Tanya was saying about 
your prayers and everyone's prayers for us during this trip, it was really tangible. Um, one by one, the kids were getting sick and we're thinking, oh no, because we spent a lot of time in the Amazon living there and once in a while we need to take the kids to get interned and get uh, things stuck in their hands and they were really sick, right? They need to recuperate for about a day or two and whatever. So the kids were getting sick one by one and they'd have some junk coming out for about half a day and it, was, it almost seemed like somebody just turned off the faucet and it stopped and they felt immediately better and it was like, okay, I know somebody's praying. And there's different instances like that. Uh, today, in, in today's day, it's not that easy to travel and it was a really big uh, walk of faith for, for us to take that step into the Amazon as a family unit uh, Pastor Mike wasn't able to come with us. He was in, uh, his wife was in a situation similar to Pastor Kate um, in that she had to undergo surgery and couldn't make, uh, Mike wasn't able to go, unfortunately. So it was just the family unit in there. And uh, we had a, a really great time. And like I was saying, prayer was definitely tangible. So thank you so much for those people that were praying it really showed up. Uh, even on the way back, we got, uh, Kyla and I got some pretty serious food poisoning and a flight was canceled. So it was kind of a blessing in disguise that that happened. Um, in Colombia, it's a little bit easier to get uh, medication over the counter. You don't need a doctor's prescription or anything. So we know kind of how to deal and navigate getting better quickly on your feet, which is a, a great help. Our layover, we, all, we almost missed our layover. The planes were getting delayed. We had to uh, resubmit our luggage and all these other things were happening, right? And it was like, okay, we're gonna miss our flight if something doesn't happen because there's this line that's lined up from here to the parking lot way over there. And um, so we're just there. Okay, God, we're gonna miss this plane if you don't do something. And sure enough, this lady, security lady, comes in and she opens up a line right for us. She's like, oh, okay, you guys can go here. And it was like, oh, thank you, God. So we're running to our plane. And there was just different instances, instances where, it, uh, where God showed up. Um, so, yeah, just to reinforce what Tanya was saying here. If I could share even a, a quick scripture with you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage. It would, we would rather be away from the body at, and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. So we, we make it our aim to please him in our lives. And we're in uh, uncertain times more than ever, it seems. And even amid, amidst all this uncertainty, we want to make it our aim to please the Lord. And we want to please the Lord even in the Amazon, in the mission work, and um, want to really thank everybody that gave and prayed into this work because it was um, it felt like there was a, a cloud by day and fire by night following us through this whole trip um, so the Bible school was a great success God moved in, in many different ways and there's even a story I want to take from one girl that we we've known of that has lived there for a very long uh, for a long time she's probably about 30 years old now but this Bible school, just like many of us, perhaps when before we met Christ, we knew a little bit about the church, a little bit about the Bible, but there was no real relationship there with, with Jesus. And I remember seeing this girl, she was kind of in, involved in the church, not really, but she would end up in uh, the city and have really late nights and parties, and then she would walk from downtown, basically, back to the community, kind of looking like a zombie, just... That was her life. And then she ended up coming to the Bible school. And that was actually the, uh, the first time where she truly gave her heart to Jesus. And she said she felt like God was there in the room. And it, it's just amazing to see that type of fruit. And this girl has 
since then, uh, given her life to Christ in a powerful way, baptized in the Holy Spirit, gone to Bible school. Now she's married and creating her family of her own, and she's in ministry. And it's like God does these things. So there's that aspect to the Bible school that produces fruit as well. Uh, it's such a great opportunity. Jesus prays, uh, wants us to pray that God would send laborers into his harvest, and the harvest is ripe. So your prayers are definitely not in vain for, for having God move. When someone's taken a, a step of faith to do a certain type of work, God's there. He's doing stuff. And when I, when I was there uh, speaking with the students there, there, that was very, the Holy Spirit was very evident in many of their responses to prayer and uh, to getting ministered to. They're raising their hands in response to what was going on with them, what they needed, and it was very evident, and uh, it was an amazing time at the Bible school. The church pro uh, building project is a very difficult one, like Tanya was saying, and we're going to show you some pictures so you can get a better idea of that. <laughs> I remember walking from the church with uh, Casilda, which is Ignacio's wife, my Tanya's mother, um, and I was asking her, how's everything going uh, with you know, being in this leadership position in the church, she started crying. She just started crying. She said, you have no idea um, the criticism and slander that happens, that people just want to really uh, take you down when you're in a, a position like that. So I encourage you to even continue praying for them because she is the sweetest person I have ever met, this lady. And it's like, to see her in tears about being in a position that she's in is just heartbreaking to see that. And it's like, wow, we really need to strengthen our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world. All the functions at uh, Clauber's ministry, they are under underway with children's ministry, pastoral and missionary training, isolated uh, native missionaries, outreach, feeding program, all these things are still active, um, even when Clubber's transitioning. So we ask for some more extra prayer for a time of transition can always be a little bit tricky to navigate. The kids did really good down there. The kids were amazing. Um, they wanted to, as soon as we got back here, they wanted to go back again. So <laughs> it was a real big blessing. So if we can get the, the slideshow going just to get a little bit more in detail uh, about what actually happened. If it wants to cooperate. So that's us crossing the border. That's in Bogota Airport. That's crossing the river. This is at the Bible school. Bible school students. I was with the first, second, and third year. This is a brother from a very isolated tribe that uh, he's going to be some f first fruits in that area. Some of the food that they've had. Um, can you go back a little bit, Craig? Try and click on that picture. I think it's a video, if it works. It doesn't want to? Okay. It was just going to give a close-up of uh, the students there, but that's okay. That's Missionary Clauber there, and thank you for the cell phones that were donated. The cell phone was donated to this gentleman who's a missionary pastor in a village that uh, Ignacio has evangelized. Some of the church building construction. Uh, this is the church. That's the current church. You can keep going. There's Jarvis with his friends. Jacob had his birthday there. The kids were really absorbing all of it. And then at the last week, we had a training course at uh, Clauber School there. And that picture is specifically for Pastor Dan. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little bit jumpy. If you want to go back to, to zoom in on that fish that was there, if you can. If you can't, that's okay. Um, we'll have to get it to fixed a little bit. Yeah, I was hoping that one was going to be the last picture, and then we'd reel them in for next year's trip. <laughs> that was so good. We, we thank you for all your prayers. God bless. Praise the Lord.
when you sow and when you pray, you become a partner with the ones that go. Amen. Amen. So thank you for your prayers and thank you for your finances. We have family in the Amazon. Amen. 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 Well, give me 15 minutes. And we're going to receive the communion after that and close our service. And then we have service tonight at 630. But I do have a few things the Lord put on my heart to share. You know, one of the things that, uh, you now you probably laugh at this, but one of the things that was a challenge for me in, in when I was praying about taking on this role was I said, Lord, I don't think I'm going to have anything to say. Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. I was stupid. Not that I didn't think I could talk. I know myself. I'm not deceived. But there's no point in me talking if you're just going to hear what I have to say. I was like, Lord, I got to hear from you. And the Lord has been faithful, even when it's simple. And sometimes it's the simplest things that are the most profound and have the most impact in our life. But now, if you know, we have our services online, but because we're still growing our media team, we're not live streaming right now, so what goes online is a week behind. So I haven't heard last Sunday's message that Pastor Dan spoke. The last Sunday I watched Pastor Jan speak because that's when it was online. And as she was talking, which was a wonderful message about the blood, and as she was speaking that message, and if you, ha if you weren't here and you haven't listened to it, you need to go and listen to it because it was wonderful. I've never heard anyone talk about the blood like that. But it reminded me of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, which we all know. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And as I was listening to her speak, I kept hearing the Lord say this. Don't look to yourself. Look to the blood. Look to the blood. So I want to talk a little bit this morning about looking to the blood. I love how Pastor Jan brought up the world of horse racing and how that hundreds of thousands of dollars are spent solely on a bloodline. And how that when those people go out to try to find the next champion, they're not looking at that foal and how it looks, or how it behaves, or how strong it appears to be. Because they understand that the power that's in its bloodline will cause any weakness it has to become a strength. That they don't look on the current condition, but they look on the inheritance that is coming to it by blood. They believe that the victories in the bloodline will overpower any weakness that appears to be there. And because of Jesus and what he did on the cross for us in shedding his blood when we receive him father god doesn't see us in our current condition anymore he sees the blood he sees the blood of his son and he sees the righteousness that christ has and that becomes our righteousness see inheritance comes by blood and in Christ, we have a profound inheritance. You may not have a rich relative. You might not have a, your name written down as a beneficiary of someone's life insurance policy. You may have no natural bloodline that will cause an inheritance to come to you. But you have a spiritual bloodline. And you have a spiritual inheritance. And we need to have confidence in this. I remember a message back at the beginning of 2020 
maybe in April. I can't remember exactly when it was. Those last two years were a ride. And the Lord gave me a message because he, he, you know, we've talked a lot about overcoming generational curses and all of that is valid. It's in the word. Because there are things that come down the bloodline generationally that aren't good. But the bloodline we have from him supersedes that bloodline. And what I noticed in the word was that it says that, that God will visit the iniquity from the fathers to the children to the third or the fourth generation. But he says this, and that's always the part that we tend to, to focus on, right? But he says this, but he visits the blessing to a thousand generations. And that the blessing is far superior to the curse. But we tend to focus on the curse instead of focusing on the blood. How many of you have taken time to meditate and study the inheritance you have in the blood? One hand. How many of you have taken time to look at generational curses? Yep. But the blessing is stronger than the curse. And so we're, it's not that generational curses aren't something that we need to study and be aware of, but our focus needs to be more on the things that God says as a blessing to us. Because if the blessing is a powerful enough to go to a thousand generations, that means that you still have blessing coming into your life right now from a thousand generations ago that you don't deserve. But the blood... Inheritance comes by the blood, and we have an inheritance that is spiritual, that has been purchased for us. There is more available for us than what we have received right now. And some of the challenges is that we're looking to ourselves and what we can do and the strength that we have, and the intelligence that we have, and the skills and the talent that we have, instead of looking to the blood. Because what we have naturally is insignificant, but what we have spiritually is powerful. There is more available to you than what you have received. So you may feel weak and vulnerable. And I'll just tell you, I mean, I know I've heard some of you say to me, I, even this last week, oh, look, you're so strong. Like, I don't feel strong right now. I mean, to be completely honest with you, I'm a little tired. As soon as I get home, I'm going to eat something. I'm going to pass out on the couch and then I'll be back here to lead worship because I wanted to lead worship. And I figured it would be unwise to do them both in one service. So I broke it up in two. I'm a little tired right now. I, I can't tell you, I don't feel real strong right now. I don't really all, often feel strong anyway. And I know I'm stubborn. I mean, when you're saying you're a strong person, I think what you're really saying to me is, man, you're stubborn. <laughs> I don't have a lot of strength. And I definitely don't have it now. I mean, I know a few of you said to me on Tuesday, we could tell you were in pain. I wasn't in pain. But all my muscles were cut. They don't have any strength right now. It's going to take time, and I can't even begin to exercise and build them up until the healing recovery time has, has passed. And then it will take time to build those muscles up. So it's not pain when you see me wincing in my face. It's trying to use muscles that don't normally support me that way and trying to move in a way where I don't hurt anything. I don't feel strong. Honestly, I feel a little vulnerable. That's why I'm like, dude, do not hug me today. <laughs> I mean, like, I know I said that you'd have one day when the social distancing went away, but today is not that day. <laughs> you might feel afraid. It might feel like things are uncertain. You might not have the answers to the questions you're facing. Man, I've been there for years sometimes but don't look to yourself look to the blood don't look to yourself look to the blood that's what he meant when he said in Hebrews 12 2 looking unto Jesus 
for he is the author and the finisher, not only of our faith, but our life. And he endured the cross for us and shed his blood so that we could have the benefits of what his blood purchased. So I want to read to you a few scriptures this morning. Don't look at yourself because God doesn't look at you. He looks at the blood that's on you. He doesn't look at your past. He sees the blood. And he doesn't deal with you based on your past. Because if your past is under the blood, he has chosen to forget it. So if God isn't holding you to your past, why are you? It's time to look to the blood for our confidence and some of the achievements of the blood. Have you looked and studied about the achievements, the benefits of the blood? 1 John 1.17, the blood cleanses us. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. The blood cleanses you completely, not like a little bit of dove soap, like cleanses you. It's not even as good as dawn. Cleanses you completely. The blood forgives our sin, Hebrews 9, 22. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. The blood cleanses a guilty conscience, and this is something that we often struggle with. Sometimes we know God's forgiven us, but we still have guilt that we deal with. Hebrews 9.14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? See, when you deal with these things, when you deal with feeling like you're full of sin, when you deal with feeling like you need to be forgiven, when you deal with feeling guilty, look to the blood. The blood redeems us, 1 Peter 1, 18, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by the tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. The blood justifies you, Romans 5, 19. Five, nine. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, he shall be saved from wrath through him. Do you know what it means to be redeemed? Do you know what it means to be forgiven? Do you know what it means to be cleansed? Do you know what it means to be justified? How many have ever heard the little saying, justified means it's just if I'd never done it. When Satan or yourself, because I think we like to blame him, but I think we're to blame most of the time, tries to bring your past up, you're justified if you're under the blood. Now, if you're not under the blood, you can fix that because he made it available that we come to him, that we repent of our sin. It doesn't mean that we're just sorry we got caught, that we repent, which means we turn around and start going another way. We repent of our sin. And last Sunday we had some get baptized because the word says repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sin. And then when we receive him, we receive the blood and the blood cleanses us from the sin. It forgives us of the sin. It redeems us, which means it brings us back to that place in God that we were supposed to be in the first place. And then it justifies us so that it becomes like just as if we never did it. It also gives us access, Hebrews 10, 19 through 20, 
two, therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Not only are we forgiven, not only are we cleansed, not only are we redeemed and justified, but we have access. Are you accessing his presence? Because it was purchased for you with the blood of his son. Are you looking to the blood? His blood gives us peace with God, Colossians 1.20. And by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. There is no longer conflict between you and God because of the blood. Amen. But he has made peace. And the last one I'll bring up, and there's so much more. It, it, we could exhaust the rest of our lives looking at the achievements of the blood of Jesus. But because of time this morning, Luke 22, 20. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, and worship team, you can come back up. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. The blood purchased a new covenant for us. The old covenant had a lot of restrictions, and as we have noticed recently, we don't like restrictions. But the blood purchased a new covenant for us. It was the blood. If Jesus wouldn't have died on the cross and shed his blood, we would not have a new covenant. If you are in Christ, you're a new creation. You have a new bloodline. So we need to walk as if we are new creations. We need to walk as if we have a new bloodline. You guys can go ahead and pass those out and we'll just hold it and take it together. So your past can no longer determine your future when you're in Christ. Your strength is no longer determined by your DNA, your culture, your economics, your talent, your skill, your intelligence, or your experience. Your strength is in the blood. I may physically be weak today, but because of the blood, I'm strong. Your forgiveness is in the blood. Your freedom is in the blood. Your healing is in the blood. Your protection is in the blood. Your life is in the blood. So don't look to yourself. Don't look to what it is you think you can or cannot do. The answers that you have or don't have. The strength that you think you have or don't have. Don't look to yourself. Look to the blood. Galatians 2.20 says this, For I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ by his blood who lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and he shed his blood for me. Look to the blood. See, each time we receive communion, as we will in a moment, we receive a new beginning. We have a new opportunity to stop looking to ourself and look to the blood because the blood is powerful enough to overcome every challenge that you're facing. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. There isn't anything that you're facing this morning not anything physically, not anything mentally. And I know many of you are going through some really challenging times. 
But the blood will sustain you. The blood will protect you. The blood will strengthen you. The blood will uphold you. And the blood can cause all of those old things to become new. Amen. Go ahead. Seated upon the throne in the Father's love. Destined to die for our Only Son, perfect and spotless one. He never sinned, suffered as if he did. All of the Lord. Praise the Lord. You might have failure in your life, but there's victory in the blood. There's victory in the blood. And if you have received Christ, your failures have been erased. And all that's in your past is victory because all that's in his past is victory. There is no failure in Christ only victory and if you've been crucified in Christ it's no longer your life it's no longer your failures 
It's no longer your past, but his blood has rewritten your life and your life has been stamped with victory. So don't look to yourself, but look to the blood. And on that night where he was about ready to shed his blood for us, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them, including Judas. He gave it to all of them, knowing that all of them that night would run away from him. That though Peter said, I'll never leave you, that he would run away and deny him. That they would lose confidence in him. That the world would rejoice in his suffering. But he still broke his body anyway. And he handed it to them and he said to them, this is my body which is being given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Shall we take the bread this morning? Lord, we thank you that because you broke your body that we've been grafted in. That because you were broken, we don't have to be broken anymore. But by your stripes, by your brokenness, we are healed. And in the same way, he took that cup and he said, which we read already this morning, this cup is the new covenant that's been purchased by my blood. It's been shed for you. There is a new covenant that is waiting for you to grab it. And it's been purchased with his blood. And all that is required of you to receive that newness of life, that new covenant, that strength, that victory, is to receive what he did on the cross with the shedding of his blood. Shall we take the cup this morning? We thank you, Lord, because there is so much more that you have given us than what we have received to this point, but we say, Holy Spirit, come. And open up our eyes. Give us a desire. Give us a, a hunger to know what the blood has provided for us. That we begin to look to the blood. That blood that was shed. That blood that's been applied. That blood that rewrote our history. The blood that took away all of our sin and cleansed us and redeemed us and justified us and sanctified us and opened up a way for us to come into your presence and receive the blood that is our victory. Holy Spirit, teach us the power of the blood so that we would live lives in victory. That we would live lives honoring to the sacrifice that you made for us. And that each day that we walk, that we would look to the blood, that we would look to the cross, that we would call out on the name of Jesus. And every season that we walk through, every difficulty we face, every storm that pops up, that we would not be afraid, but that we would call out on the blood and that we would walk in the newness of life, that you have paid such a high price to give to us and that we might be one with you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you want special prayer this morning, you can come to the front as we close service. Just to remind you, we have service tonight. But I just really want to encourage you, look to the blood. 
because we are living below what he has stamped on us. You're not weak. You're not stupid. You're not insignificant. And you are not a failure. You are a victor. You're more than a conqueror. You are an overcomer. Not because of anything that you did, but because of what he did for us. And not only are you an overcomer, but together we're overcomers. We overcome. It doesn't matter how many storms come. He said, let's go to the other side. We're going to the other side. Amen. He's in the boat with us. He's provided everything we have need of. We have no reason to be depressed. We have no reason to be cast down. We have no reason to fear or be afraid. Our God has overcome, and he is with us. And we will overcome by his blood and the word of his testimony that has now become our testimony. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you this morning. Let your word seep into us and let it become real in our spirit. We ask you to engage our spirit, man, to know the word and to walk in the truth and to grab hold of the power of your blood in our lives. And Lord, for each one this morning that's going through a physical trial, we say be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. By your stripes, we are healed. Lord, each one that's going through a storm and a challenge in their life right now, we speak peace, be still. Because you are the way maker. You're a miracle worker. And Lord, you have even in these last three weeks done a miracle for me physically. And Lord, I know that you are working miracles right now for our church family. You are working miracles right now in the Ukraine. You are working miracles right now in our nation. You are working miracles right now all over the face of the world. Because that's who you are. You're a miracle working God. And we thank you for the blood that you shed for us that has paved the way for our victory. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed this morning. And if you would like prayer, please come to the front and we will pray with you.
of the goodness of God. So
of the good. 